Hey friends, welcome back to the channel and to a brand new series called Business Class. This is a new series where I'm gonna share everything I've learned over the last six years of starting, growing, and scaling a profitable business that makes lots of money, but is relatively stress-free and gives me a lifestyle that I really enjoy. And so in this video, I'm gonna go through the general philosophy of this kind of business, which I call the feel-good business model. So this video is gonna be split up into three parts. Firstly, we're gonna be talking about the difference between three different types of business model, the traditional business, the high-growth startup, and the feel-good business. Then we're gonna go through a high-level five-step framework for how to actually build a feel-good business. And finally, we'll go through some of the mistakes that me and others have made along the journey of attempting to build these sort of feel-good businesses. And so I'm hoping that by the end of the video, whether you want to start a business or you're trying to grow a business, you can decide is the feel-good business model or something like that the right thing for you. And thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this video, but more on them later. Part one, the feel-good business charter. So before we talk about the differences between a feel-good business and traditional and startup, I just want to share a few notes that I've taken for myself where I've been trying to create a sort of charter that lays out the principles that me and my team are trying to follow or trying our best to follow as it comes to growing a feel-good business. If you vibe with some of these ideas, you might enjoy the rest of the video. So this is our feel-good business charter version 0.1. Our purpose is to create a business that prioritizes personal fulfillment, meaningful work, and a positive impact on the lives of our customers, our team members, and our audience. We strive to make good money, have freedom, fun, and flexibility while helping others. Our principles are as follows. Number one, enjoy the journey. We look forward to Mondays and embrace work that energizes us. Even with financial success, we would continue doing what we love. Two, cultivate positive relationships. We work with team members and clients we genuinely enjoy spending time with, fostering a supportive and enjoyable work environment. Three, embrace autonomy. We create a business structure that allows team members to focus on tasks they enjoy and excel at while delegating responsibilities as needed. Four, diversify clientele. We avoid over-reliance on big clients, embracing a diverse client base to maintain our independence and ability to choose who we work with. Five, prioritize slow, sustainable growth. We aim for slow, steady growth that's more manageable and sustainable, focusing on long-term success. Six, maintain a small, efficient team. We keep our team size manageable, striving to keep the team as small as is reasonable to reduce pressure and maintain a close-knit, collaborative atmosphere. Seven, focus on profitability and longevity. We aim for high profit margins and take profits annually, investing in our future and creating a financial safety net. Eight, embrace flexibility. We create a work environment that allows for schedule flexibility, enabling team members to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Nine, minimize synchronous work. We limit synchronous work to maintain flexibility while acknowledging the occasional need for team interactions and collaboration. 10, we set our own deadlines. We choose our own deadlines and avoid reliance on external pressures, fostering a sense of autonomy and control. And 11, pursue fulfilling work. We engage in work that helps others and feels meaningful, creating a sense of purpose and satisfaction beyond monetary rewards. Part two, traditional business versus startup versus feel-good business. Okay, so one way of understanding the feel-good business model is to appreciate the differences between that and a traditional business model and a high-growth startup business model. So a traditional business is generally most businesses that you interact with day-to-day. -day. It can be small businesses like the local laundromat or the local dry cleaner or a marketing firm or the accounting firm that you use, all the way through to massive companies like McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Ford, that kind of thing. Now, generally a traditional business has a steady and moderate growth orientation. Profit is a focus of these businesses, but their margins tend to be sort of sub 20%. They tend to have moderate capital requirements, so often requires investment to get one of these businesses started, to buy the equipment or the machinery or to rent the premises. Work-life balance isn't really a priority. Obviously it varies depending on the company, but like the company isn't oriented around the idea of work-life balance. It's oriented around the idea of growth. And usually the structure of this organization is fairly formal and fairly hierarchical. So that's one type of business. Then on the other hand, you've got high growth startups that sort of turn all of this on its head. So for example, high growth startups are aiming for rapid and exponential growth. And of course they care about profit in the long term, but in the short to medium term, they're willing to blow a bunch of cash and pour VC venture capitalist money into this machine to go for exponential growth in the hope that profits will materialize further down the line. This is the classic thing that Uber did, that Amazon did. This is very different to how traditional businesses and feel-good businesses operate. Usually a high growth startup has a very high capital requirement and tends to be backed by venture capitalists. There's not a lot of work-life balance when you're building a high growth startup. It is famously bad for work-life balance. It tends to be very demanding on the life of the founders and the team. And generally the org structure is very flexible and people are constantly changing roles as more things are needed and more people are being added to the team. And then the third main category is what we're calling the feel-good business model. So when it comes to growth, the growth isn't really that important for a feel-good business. The main thing is to optimize for the fun, freedom, flexibility, and lifestyle of the owner and sometimes by extension the team. So often with a feel-good business, you might think I could work twice as hard to grow twice as much, 
but actually, if I could work half as much to keep my profits the same, I'd, I'd rather go for that. Secondly, when it comes to profit and margins, usually feel good businesses have very high margins. So beyond the 40, 50% mark. And I know plenty of feel good businesses that have margins way higher than that as well. And this is nice because the more profit you're making as a percentage of revenue, i.e. your margin, the more ability you have to run the business on your own terms. Usually a feel good business doesn't have much of a capital requirement. Often you can start them off bootstrapping, i.e. you can just fund them yourself. Work-life balance is absolutely prioritized with a feel good business. And when it comes to the organizational structure, the objective is to keep the team to a very small and manageable size. There are some people that are just solopreneurs. It's just one person, maybe with a few virtual assistants and maybe a few contractors. But the key thing is to keep the organization as flat and as small as possible, which is not one of the priorities of these other two types of businesses. Now, once you've got the product and you actually want to start your business, then a genuinely fantastic resource to use is Shopify, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Shopify powers businesses by giving you all of the tools you need to create your business wherever you are in the world, letting you sell online, in person, and across all major social platforms. It's a fantastic way to start and scale your own business without having to learn how to code or having to design your own website. Now, Shopify powers more businesses and entrepreneurs than anyone else in the world, with millions of businesses using Shopify, including our own, across 175 countries. Their mission is to reduce the barriers to business ownership, to make commerce better for everyone, which is a pretty great goal if you ask me. Now we use Shopify for both our stationary brand and we've also used it to sell online courses. And we're using Shopify to power the e-commerce platform that we're building as we speak for our upcoming tech brand where we're trying to design our own keyboards and bags and stuff. And Shopify also makes tools for new business owners like the Business Name Generator, which is awesome, and also Shopify Learn, which is their online learning learning platform for all things related to business. They also give new entrepreneurs easy to use selling options like their starter plan, where you can create an online store in literally minutes without needing to know how to code. Now, if you're interested in trying out Shopify and generating leads and sales for your business, then head over to shopify.com forward slash Ali Abdal or hit the link in the video description. And that link will let you sign up to a totally free trial of Shopify. So you can make a store, you can try it out completely risk-free, you can have a play around and you can see if it vibes with you. So thank you so much Shopify for sponsoring this video. Part three, the feel good business framework, how to actually build a feel good business. Okay, so again, there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but I've tried to narrow it down to five things that I think make a good feel good business. And this is the method that I would follow if I was trying to build a feel good business from scratch. So step one would be to figure out what is the skill that you're passionate about and trying your best to market validate the idea. So the key difference between a feel good business and other kinds of businesses is that a feel good business tends to be centered around a skill that you as the owner or as the business creator particularly enjoy. And that's one of the key things because part of the feel good business model is you wanna create a business that gives you fun, freedom and flexibility. And part of that fun is making sure that the work you're doing is actually intrinsically enjoyable for you. So if for example, you decided to create a t-shirt printing business because you thought it could make money, but you had zero passion about t-shirts or about printing or about clothing, it wouldn't really be a feel good business. You'd be doing it just for the sake of making money, which is fine, but that's not the vibe that we're trying to go with for a feel good business. The objective is that we enjoy the work alongside the work making money. Now this could be something creative like graphic design or illustration or writing or coding or video editing. It's like things like that are generally fairly easy to build a business around. And so one of the questions you can ask yourself, and this is a question I ask myself a lot, is that if I won the lottery and I had hundred million dollars in the bank, how would I choose to spend my time? And then initially I might say, well, I'd choose to spend my time by sipping cocktails on a beach in Thailand and stuff. But like when that gets boring, most people realize that they do want to spend their time doing something that is of value to other people, doing some sort of service that adds value to the world or to their local community. For me personally, that's things like reading, writing, learning, and teaching. That's why I make these YouTube videos because all of that is inherently enjoyable for me. And so the question for you is what is that skill for you? If you don't have one of these skills yet, or you don't yet know what you're passionate about, that is totally okay. Finding work you love is a lifelong journey. But an easy way to get started is by just trying out lots and lots of different things. And the more of these things you try, the more you'll get a sense of what do you personally have an aptitude for? What do you personally enjoy doing? What are the sorts of things that when you do, you find that they generate energy rather than drain your energy? Now, obviously you have to make sure that there is a market for the thing because it's not a feel good hobby. It's a feel good business. And so the objective is to use this thing that you enjoy to add value to other people and then they can pay you for it. And that's where step two comes in. And step two would be to choose your business model and find a way to generate leads for that product. Now, broadly, there are three different ways that you can make money. You can do a service business, you can do a product business, or you can do a content business. Now a service business is when you are providing a service in return for money. A product business is when you are using your skills to create a product and then you are selling that product for money. And then a content business is when you are using your skills to create free content on the internet and then you're monetizing it through advertising on YouTube AdSense or Medium or whatever the format is, or you're able to then sell products and services to the audience that you build up over the long term. And so if you take whatever skill you're passionate about, you can start thinking of it in this way. You can start thinking, okay, if I had to create a service, a product and or content around this skill, what would it be? For example, let's say you are very passionate about woodworking 
and you want to create your feel-good business around the skill of woodworking. Now, the service-based version of this would be to offer woodworking as a service. So for example, you could go to people's houses and you could tweak their setups and you can design custom furniture for them and all this kind of, it sort of becomes a bespoke service that you offer to clients. Secondly, you could try and make a product business out of it. You can think, okay, cool. What are the products that I could make using my woodworking skills? And then how can I find a mass audience of people to sell them to? And it doesn't need to be that many people, but it just needs to be enough to sustain your business and make a reasonable profit. Or thirdly, you could create a content business around this, i.e. you could start making content on the internet about how to do woodworking. And you could do a tour of your workshop and you can teach people how you make stuff or time-lapse the process of you making stuff. Now, if the skill is something general, then it's generally easier to build a feel-good business out of. So for example, I really enjoy coding, for example. I can basically imagine any client that I might like spending time with, and I can imagine how I can serve that client through the skill of coding. For example, let's say I spend a lot of time watching YouTubers. I might think, cool, how do I apply my passion and skill of coding to the market of YouTubers? And then I might be able to make some creator economy startup through code. I might be able to offer services and build custom competitor analysis databases for YouTubers and other creators. I might be able to start a YouTube channel based around teaching people how to code. So you can see how if you start thinking in this way, you can make sure that the thing you're trying to build your business around is the skill or passion that you are passionate about and you're just connecting it to a business model that works. Step three would then be to build a minimum viable product. What's the minimum viable thing that you can create that gets your idea or your service or your product or your content out there into the world that lets you get feedback? Now, the wrong way of going about this is to sort of sit in a cave for three years and build your thing in the hope that when you launch it three years later, people will come and get to it. But that's generally a bad way of building any kind of business and also a bad way of building a feel-good business. Like the idea of doing a feel-good business is that you're nimble, you're agile, you're able to adapt to market conditions and you're able to be flexible in your approach. Because if you want the sort of business that gives you the lifestyle that you really love, you can't necessarily be wedded to one specific way of doing things. Because if the market isn't right for it or you can't find the audience or people aren't willing to pay you for the thing, you can't really build a business out of it. It's just gonna be a hobby rather than a business. All right, step four would then be to scale sustainably and optimize for balance. So in the early days of a business especially, it's very easy to burn the midnight oil and sort of work super, super, super hard. But we sort of wanna begin with the end in mind and we wanna recognize that, hey, if we are attempting to build a feel-good business, we kind of want it to be sustainable from day one. That's not to say that we can never work past 5 p.m. or we always have to, I don't know, not work on weekends, whatever the thing might be. Sometimes when you're starting a business, things just do take a little bit more work. And in future videos in this series, we're gonna go into a bunch of specific methods that me and my team have used over the last few years to try and sustainably scale. And I'll be sharing all of the ins and outs of those. So if that sounds interesting and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, then do please consider doing so. And then step five in this very high level process would be to periodically reevaluate and pivot and to figure out is the thing that you are currently doing actually the thing that you want to be doing. Now, when it comes to a business, like it's too easy to, especially once you get success, to just keep on doubling down on that success. We had a big success a couple of years ago with our course, the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. It was making millions every year. Loads of people were signing up to it. But then I had this nagging feeling where I asked myself, if I, if I won the lottery, would I really want to continue running courses teaching people how to be YouTubers? And the answer was, not really. And because I knew that I ultimately want to build a feel-good business, I decided to reevaluate and pivot the business away from running live cohort courses, teaching people how to be YouTubers. So in the end, we ended up turning that course into a pre-recorded evergreen course. That's available now, people can buy it at any point. In fact, every year, we're probably gonna make at least a million dollars less than if we had kept running it as a live cohort. But part of the feel-good business thing is that you make decisions for the sake of your lifestyle and for the sake of free freedom, fun, and flexibility rather than necessarily making every decision with growth and profit and revenue in mind. There are so many startup founders I know who kind of talk to me in confidence and say, hey, I don't really enjoy my startup anymore. Yes, it's worth $100 million, $300 million, whatever the thing might be, but I really like the idea of starting a YouTube channel because you have freedom, you have fun, you have flexibility, you can do what you want. Part four, common mistakes to avoid. So I've been speaking to a bunch of people who have these sorts of feel-good businesses, and there's a bunch of mistakes that I see people make a lot, and I've made basically all of these mistakes as well. And so we're just gonna talk through some of these now in the hope that they might come in handy for you. And these are actually all serving also as reminders to myself, because you know, when it comes to building a business, it's not something I figured out. I don't think there is anything to figure out. I think it's an ongoing process of learning, which is why I wanna make this series of videos, because as I'm learning new things and applying them to our business and making mistakes, and taking principles and lessons along the way. I can then make videos sharing those things. Anyway, one big mistake that people make when it comes to feel-good businesses is ignoring market validation. I see a lot of people trying to build a business from a YouTube channel, for example, but they focus only on making videos that they enjoy making and they completely neglect the fact that like, if there isn't a market for the thing and people don't vibe with what you're making, then you can't really make a business out of it because a hobby is something that you do for fun for yourself because it brings joy to you. But a business is something that you do for other people to add value to other people and to make money. 
Now, a feel-good business is somewhere in the middle, but there is sort of that overlap between the thing that you enjoy, but the thing also needs to have a market and be able to make money. Because if you're not making money, then you can't build a sustainable business off the back of the thing. That is just the way of the world. We're aiming for very high margins. We're aiming for 50% and above margins. And you don't get that by constantly trying to make stuff where there isn't a market for the stuff. Second big mistake that we definitely made like a year ago is trying to scale too fast too soon. It's too easy to think, oh my God, money's growing on trees. We've got product market fit. This thing is going really well. Let's just like double our team size. But actually slow, sustainable growth is a much more relaxing and much more chill place to be rather than rapid exponential growth. And whenever I've been at the point where I feel like we've scaled too quickly, I have found my time being going in multiple different places because then there's all these problems that rock up as a result of trying to go too big too quickly. And then we don't have time to solve the problems. And then it's like a lot of my time is spent firefighting. And then I think I look back on my week and I think like, you know, I started this business because I wanted to make content that helps people and I wanted to learn and teach and share stuff. And I've spent my entire week managing the team or I've spent my entire week doing operations or like fighting fires or like doing admin. And it's like, how did we end up here? And so, you know, I think I, I've never met anyone who's managed to get the balance completely solid for their entire business journey. You know, it's always a case of like going back and forth, but constantly reevaluating and making sure that you're not trying to scale too fast too soon. You're not setting your growth targets to be like ridiculously ambitious because all of that stuff adds stress and stress is not fun. And chronic stress, especially over the long term, is just bad for your physical health, bad for your mental health, bad for your emotional health, bad for everything in general. And so sort of goes against one of the key principles of the feel good business. Big mistake number three is to forget work life balance. Again, this is a mistake that I make all the time. So this is as much a kind of note to self as anything else. But the whole point of a feel good business is to enjoy life, not just work. I spent the weekend a few days ago with some of my friends from university up north in Yorkshire. It was very nice and very relaxing. And I was kind of wondering during that weekend that like, I didn't really do any work and normally I work on the weekends and I convince myself that I'm working on the weekends because work is fun and I look forward to work and therefore it's like I'd, I'd rather be doing that than anything else. But then I kind of asked myself, how much joy do I have in my life? And the answer was honestly not very much. There's not many things I do just for the sake of it, just, pu just purely for the joy of it. Like I really enjoy playing video games. I really enjoy reading fiction, but I tend not to do as much of that because it feels like, oh, but we're in a point at the business where the business is growing and all this kind of stuff. And it's so easy when, you know, especially when you're doing something that's fun, you know, this is really fun. I enjoy this stuff. I enjoy building the business. It's so addictive, like seeing the growth and leading the team and adding more people. But it's so easy to forget the work-life balance thing. This is like absolutely first world problems, but like that's fine <laughs> while we're here. And so again, one of the things that I'm hoping for, like by making videos about this and by like writing down the charter for the feel good business is to basically make a set of rules for myself that when I find myself, for example, working on a weekend, two or three weekends in a row or something like that, I think, nope. That's not the goal. The goal is to build a feel good business to allow me to enjoy life and not just work. And that means making time for health and relationships and friends and family and hobbies and joy and all that kind of fun stuff. So that is the feel good business model. It's a sort of high level approach on how to make money while also having fun and enjoying your life along the way. If you got to the end of this video, I would love to know what did you find interesting or not interesting about this? What more stuff would you like to see? This is a brand new series. Like I don't really talk about this business stuff very much. And as you might've been able to tell, I'm still sort of formulating my thoughts on some of these, but I thought it would be more interesting to share stuff in real time, like the V0.1 of our charter, rather than for me to have solidified it over the next three years and then share it once it's fully ready. Because I think every business is basically an evolving entity. And as I'm learning stuff and as I'm reading books and attending courses and using coaches and making mistakes and learning stuff as our business is growing, I really wanna try my best to share these insights with you guys so that you can learn from that experience. And if you got to this point and you're interested in learning about the specific apps that we use to grow our business, check out this video over here. This is a sort of over the shoulder walkthrough of 12 specific apps that we've been using for the last couple of years to help grow our multi-million dollar business. And lots of people have commented on that video saying they found it very helpful. So if that's not up your street, then do check it out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye-bye.